How you doing guys, welcome to another episode. This is topic 10, Organic Chemistry, Volume 4, where we look at some additional organic classes and then we have a deeper look at the benzene ring structure. Let's get straight to it. Okay, so Volume 4, Additional Organic Classes and Benzene. We've looked at a few other classes in some previous videos, so make sure you check those out. And now we look at a few others, plus we have a look at benzene. Remember that functional groups are the reactive parts of a molecule and benzene is known as an aromatic unsaturated hydrocarbon. The classes we look at in this video are ethers, esters, amides, amines, nitriles and arenes. And we need to be able to identify the functional groups in those different compounds. So remember the functional groups are the substituents that play important roles in the chemistry of a molecule. They're the reactive parts of a molecule. Now an ether contains a carbon, single bond oxygen, single bond to another carbon. The name of that functional group is called an ether and it belongs to the class of ethers. Now how do ethers come about? Well they're usually formed from two alcohols and if you do biochemistry you'll know that to be a glycosidic link. An ester is a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen and then a single bond to another oxygen. It's known as an ester link, and it's formed from an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. The class of compounds known as amides contain a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen, and then a single bond to an NH2 functional group. Now the name of this functional group is different to the class. It's known as a carboxy amide functional group and you need to know the difference between those amide is the class carboxy amide is the name of the functional group and to make one of these carboxy amides usually we have a carboxylic acid and then an amine uh, an amine group attached to it so those two things will react to form a carboxy amide group The nitrile is a carbon with a triple bond to a nitrogen. The class of nitriles, the functional group is known as a nitrile functional group as well. And we don't really need to know how those are made for the IB course. An arene is a, the functional group of a benzene ring. So six carbons and five hydrogens. And the functional group is known as a phenyl group. So the class is an arene, the functional group is a benzene ring, but the name of the functional group must be described as a phenyl functional group. More about the arenes, well they're a class of compounds derived from benzene. And remember benzene has the formula C6H6. They form a class of compounds known as aromatics, which have properties that are very different from all of the other compounds. Arenes contain the phenyl functional group, which has the formula C6H5. It's lost a hydrogen because that carbon must be connected to something else that's part of the chain. So when we're describing that functional group, we would have some molecule and then we would have a benzene ring sticking off it. And that benzene ring will usually have the formula C6H5. The three different structures of benzene are shown in, on the right there. We can show it with the full structural formula or we can do it with the condensed structural formula. Now the bonds in benzene, well they're all 120 degrees. They're all a trigonal planar arrangement. Each of them, are some, they're all the same, so it means that benzene is symmetrical. Now what happens here is there's some p orbitals that haven't bonded. So what will happen is those p orbitals will start to overlap. And on the right hand side, we get the electron cloud diagram, which shows all of the p orbitals in benzene overlapping to create this donut like structure. It's this donut like structure of those p orbitals that allow benzene to have some delocalization in the ring. So that means it can resonate. Those double bonds, they can change position, and we don't know exactly where they are. All we know is that there are three of them that creates that delocalization in the benzene ring. So what is some of the physical and chemical evidence for the structure of benzene? Well, the physical evidence is the bond length and the bond strength. And both of the values for these can be found in the data book. So 
So on page 10, we have the covalent bond lengths, and that tells us how long the carbon to carbon bond will be. And table 11 describes the bond enthalpies, which can tell us about the bond strength, how much energy it takes to break the bond. So if we look up the data for the carbon to carbon bond length, it is 154 picometers, and a picometer is times 10 to the negative 12. A carbon to carbon double bond is 134 picometers. If we have a look at the strength, the carbon to carbon single bond has a bond strength of 346 kilojoules per mole. That's how much energy we need to break one mole of the bonds. The carbon to carbon double bond is 614. So we can see here that the carbon to carbon double bond is a lot shorter and a lot stronger than the carbon to carbon single bond. Okay, well what about benzene? Where does benzene sit? Again, using the data from the tables. We see that the carbon to carbon bond in benzene is 140 picometers, and the strength of the carbon to carbon bond is 507 picometers. So that's somewhere between the carbon to carbon double and the carbon to carbon single. So what we can express this as is that the benzene ring has a partial double bond. So it sits somewhere between the length and the strength of those two. The chemical evidence of benzene is that benzene does not undergo addition reactions. That double bond in the benzene ring will not break, but it will undergo some substitution reactions where we replace a hydrogen with a chlorine, for example, or a bromine. If we do do a substitution on the benzene ring, because it is symmetrical and all of the adjacent carbons are the same in the ring, that means that we would only have one isomer of a particular benzene compound. So for instance, if we have one, two dibromobenzene, which means we substituted two bromines onto the benzene ring, it doesn't matter where we start to put in those bromines, the main thing is, is they must be next to each other, one and two, and if I spin that around and move that around, it ends up being the same thing. So that means that compounds like that in the benzene ring only have one isomer. So here's a typical exam question on naming and identifying functional groups in a molecule. So here we have a drug that was that gained some attention, it was said to reduce cholesterol, and we're asked to identify the functional groups. So the functional groups are the ones that they've circled, and we're asked to name them. The problem here is a lot of students identify the class and not the name of the functional group. So it's important that you understand the difference here. The class is the name of the compound that it belongs to. The functional group is the name of that functional group in particular. So that ring there, that's a benzene ring, but its class is a benzene ring. Its functional group is a phenyl group. The one at the end, well, that's a carboxylic acid, but its functional group is known as a carboxy or a carboxyl functional group. Number four, well that's an alcohol, that's its class, but the functional group is described as a hydroxy or a hydroxyl functional group. The one in the middle there, the NHC double bond O, well that's a carboxyamide functional group. Some people might try and describe that as a peptide group if they do biology or they've studied the biochemistry option. But for this one, this is not a biological mo mo molecule. This has been made in a lab, it's a drug, so that means it's not a peptide. Peptides only belong to organic molecules. So it must be referred to as a carboxyamide in this context. Okay, volume four, some top tips. Make sure you know the difference between the class and the functional group. There was a question on this on the sample paper for the new course. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.